The one of the interesting things in sitting down and talking to a lot of different people is that either through uh, just shorthand of conversation or the, a lack of, of deep self-introspection on the part of the person talking, it seems that people are unaware of their actual motivators and goals. So we talked to a number of people, or for instance, just one person who was like, yeah, I'd like to earn more money. I'd like to earn this much mm -hmm. more money. And then as we discussed further, it would they were not willing to take a lot of steps to earn that extra money, nothing right. unethical at all, and were much more interested in other things that they did not describe as their primary goal. And it just calls to mind, and what I say, particularly at VidSummit, because it's a YouTube thing, a lot of people view themselves first and primarily as YouTubers. So mm -hmm. the metric that they care most about is views. And that's like the thing that is always unspoken important <laughs> in, in these sorts of things. But it's uh, it was just interesting for me to be on the other side of it. I'm sure I've got some blind spots myself and I wanted to chat with you. I don't know if it's worth doing on the podcast, but like, are we aware of what motivates us? <laughs> because I see, I saw a lot of people moving in two directions. They would say that they wanted right, one they thing. They say, I want to grow my business's yeah. profit would yeah. be what they said their goal was. And they're like, what are you working on? And then they would say a bunch of stuff that wasn't going yes. to grow their profit. And then you'd be like, oh, why don't you try this thing that will do it? And we're in a position to know because for we're in many, many cases have done what they've tried to do. Um, and they're disinterested in the advice because what they're actually interested in is more clout, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, for example, yes. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this could just be a shorthand of conversation where they say that they're interested in this and they are aware that they actually have these other motivators. But it's, uh, it was just interesting to me because I know that this is, I think, what stops a lot of people from getting what they want is the fact that they don't, uh, they want it with constraints that they are unaware of. Yeah. Well, we're aware of the, as far as I know. I think I, I'm aware of my constraints. I'll tell you, I'll tell you exactly what ours is. I literally said this yeah, yeah. to you while you were talking <laughs> to Alex Hormozzi, which is uh, we say, and I think would like to grow the business, yeah. make more money, grow the reach of the channel, more subscribers and views. And we will work to that end at a level we are comfortable with that doesn't require lifestyle sacrifices. Yeah. But as soon as any, as soon as anyone has advice, it's like, dude, if you just 60 hours a week for one month, yeah, and then you're going to have this massive breakthrough because it's just all about, and you'll, you're just like, no, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> Thanks. I'll just stick to the 25 hours a week thing and not grow nearly as fast. So that's the constraint that I see where we'll get good advice and be excited about the advice. And then mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we're like, oh, this is never going to happen. Yes. But I'm, I know that. I think that's I'm aware I of left, that I mean, That's why I left <laughs> private equity, right? If I just wanted to be rich and work a lot, yeah. I would have stayed in private equity. Um, so yeah, no. the other constraint is like a complete unwillingness to try any marketing things that we think are scammy. So mm -hmm. we're just constantly getting marketing advice and then not doing it. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't know our blind spots. So I guess I don't know what, what, if there's more, well, I think, but I, I think, see constraints on us where we get good advice that I know would make us more money. And we mm -hmm. just go, nah, that's okay. I think a good indicator as I was like, how could one know this about themselves, given that blind spots are by definition blind. Mm -hmm. um, you could do the emotional mastery course, <laughs> which like is the kind of the point of a lot of the exercises. Separate from that, it's, uh, are you moving slower towards some goals than your, you know, general life experience indicates you could? towards things like are you like wildly successful in some areas and some things are just stuck that's a good indicator of divided desires you know mm -hmm. like motivators just pulling you in different directions you're not you're not rowing with full force yeah i had a friend who was like this he would often lament that he wished he were better with women mm -hmm. smart guy very successful financially and that was a thing he lamented for years mm -hmm. without making any improvement on it and he accrued a lot of wealth in the meantime. And I was like, you mm -hmm. might like wish that your dating life was better, but you don't actually care about it in any way that requires or that that would indicate like meaningful work towards it. Mm -hmm. What you care about is accruing wealth. And I know that because you were worth <laughs> nothing when we graduated college and then you were worth a million dollars and now you're worth multi-million dollars and your dating life has kind of sucked the whole time. So it's like, I know because you're successful and you're smart. I know exactly what you're oriented towards. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I think it's, it's if, if he actually were to take the work that he spent towards wealth accumulation, cut it in half and put half of it towards improving his dating life, it would transform in three to six months. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that disconnect be, because 
usually it's, I, I can imagine it being very helpful to know why, because probably what's keeping you locked in just earning money or just chasing views or, or whatever it is, is uh, a motivator that you're not particularly proud of, which is why it's unconscious. I think in many cases, like you're not proud to say, really I'm committed to validation from mm -hmm. uh, the masses <laughs> or really. Or my, or, or your dad or yeah, whatever yeah. Or is. like, I just like the money is, I'll never have enough money because I want my dad to, to you know, and he, and there's no amount of money that could possibly do that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess pulling that, if you if one could pull the desire into consciousness, then you could potentially actually shift courses. And I just see this, you mentioned, you know, friends that, that are committed to making money. I see this all the time. We've had, you know, I wish I could quit. I wish I could do this. It's like, what are you secretly addicted to? Mm. If you can, if you can get past the shame of the addiction, whether it's to prestige or I don't know. Uh, I have no idea what, what anybody's particular thing, prestige and money and validation seem to be big ones, but that you might be able to undo them. But as long as they remain unconscious, you wind up saying that you want one thing that is socially acceptable moving in <laughs> another direction the entire time. Yeah. So this wasn't, this was, I mean, we're, we're kind of extrapolating based on some of the conversations that we had, but I did see at this particular thing, there's definitely people that are way more financially successful than us and that are on it, but there's also, there, there was a lot of um, views and social reach as the unspoken consistent metric yeah. in a lot of the conversations. Or just production, or just output. A Product, lot of like, yeah, oh, output, how, do I, yeah. how do I make more videos per week? Mm -hmm. That's like, a, that's a question someone could ask. And you yeah. go, well, why do you want more videos per week? Mm -hmm. Like, are you concerned in views because you want your, your message out to as many people as possible? Are you concerned with making money? In which case views actually are only, a, you shouldn't even care about them. You should just care about making money. Or do you care about the money you take home? In which case, don't worry about views or revenue, just measure projects and profit and pick the most profitable one. Mm -hmm. So I think you know a lot of times it's like, oh yeah, I'm, I gotta get better at making more videos. And there's not as much a pause of why. And then why do you want that? And then why do you want that? And then why do you want that? Yeah. Because maybe this will orient you towards coming up with a better product to <laughs> offer people. And you don't actually need to make three times as many videos. You just need a product that people want. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's interesting. And I think that's another thing. If you find yourself wanting more of something that you've already achieved several goals in, like, uh, you know, obviously food is one that you're probably going to want more of for the rest of your life every every couple of hours. But like, you know, whether it's uh, more dates, more money, more prestige, more subscribers, uh, that might be a broken metric <laughs> in terms of actually giving you the underlying thing that you're searching for. And I think, I think there is something to be said, like growth can feel in and of itself, the process of growth can be good. But mm -hmm. I also have seen people... Uh, speak about growth as if they were as if it was the end game or it was satisfying in and of itself when i see deeper validation demons in there you know sure. what i mean it's not well, like i mean oftentimes people will quote you know if you're not growing you're dying yeah but keep is keeping the same goal you've always had and just achieving a higher numerical value actually mm -hmm. growing mm -hmm. or is growing when you move from trying to accumulate views or wealth to trying to pursue enlightenment or repair your familial relationships. Yeah. Like that's potentially the more valuable growth than being like, oh, if you're not growing, you're dying. So got to get to 6 million subscribers now that we have five. That's a really interesting thought is that one way to consider growth is more along the same metric. Mm -hmm. And another way to consider growth is to recognize that you need to move to different metrics that are not as easily measured and have a uh, greater depth, uh, that that's, that's even a more challenging <laughs> kind of growth. And more like rewarding. Going from 1 to 10, 10 to 20, yeah. Uh, I think that there's something to be said for that because the way that I've always framed it is like, oh, I'm not interested in growth, but it's like, well, if, I think your framing is actually more accurate and better. Is That's what growth is. Growth is not <laughs> a first, bigger, first, bigger whatever the same metric is. Yeah, first growth was I'm scared to talk to a woman I'm attracted to. Let's conquer that and get really comfortable talking to them. And then it mm -hmm. was... I'm not good at getting second dates and then whatever. And then it was, I'm going to start a business. And then mm -hmm. it was, I'm going to accumulate wealth. But if you never pivot, if you're just constantly trying to hook up or constantly trying to accumulate wealth and you mm -hmm. do it for 70 years of your lifetime, is that really growth? Mm -hmm. I would argue you're better off growing in different ways. Well, to steel man it, the process of, you know, for business, like the person you must become to run a business that is 1 million, 10 million, 100 million, a billion, 100 billion dollars. There are, there are skills that are necessary that 
you get people skills and all those kinds of things. But I point taken, and I certainly agree with you, is that, uh, yeah, switching metrics is, I think, generally a good sign. Well, also depends what you're oriented towards. I'm oriented mm-hmm. towards fulfillment and happiness, mm-hmm. you know? So I think if you talk to Elon Musk or if you ha- watch his interviews, he has a lot of demons that get in the way of his happiness. He has anxiety, depression, sleepless insomniac nights, just divorces. Split up with grind. Yes. I was well, going to bring that up. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. You know, and so it's like, well, it, you know, if I were a close friend of his, I would suggest like, hey, I, I love that you're trying to change the world, but also like maybe there's some internal work to be done. Yeah. So you're not having sleepless nights, multiple divorces, all that stuff. But to him, he might say your, your goal of happiness and fulfillment is stupid. Mm-hmm. I'm going to live a life that lacks day-to-day happiness or peace of mind and I'm going to have my sleepless nights but my legacy will be you know a, a million times yours and he's not wrong so it also I think we're just oriented on different things you know mm-hmm. I wonder I do wonder though if deep down the orientations aren't more similar and it's just uh the assumptions that one has made about what creates pleasure pain you know you can all go back to I guess Jeremy Bentham is like somewhere in Elon's makeup is the belief that doing important things leads to positive mm-hmm. experience. I would, I, or, or at least a, a feeling of self-esteem or validation. I, I don't know that there's any way around that trap. Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description and we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.